Hello, my name is Paulina Olszewska and I'm right now here in Prague. Uh, I was invited by uh, Halupetsky Society to come here to Prague to make a research about uh, Czech art scene. Uh, and on this occasion, uh, Halupetsky Society asked me to uh, prepare a presentation about art scene in Poland today. So maybe at the beginning I will uh, tell you something about myself. I'm a curator, writer and a project producer based in Warsaw and in Poland. Uh, I studied art history at the Jagiellonian University in Krakow and at the Humboldt University in Berlin. And uh, since 2019 I have been working for Galeria Studio in Warsaw in Poland. And uh, recently my work is based on Free Areas, the collection of the Galeria Studio in, in Warsaw, and dialogue between different generation of artists, uh, mostly female artists. And I'm also interested in redefining and reinterpreting the heritage of modernism. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I was asked to maybe tell a few words about what's happening in Poland today when it goes to, to young uh, art scene. And uh, I was thinking, what should I talk about? What I saw uh, is that when it goes to Prague or Czech Republic, there is a lot of young Polish artists present here. They come to Prague to take part in residencies. They take part, uh, they take part uh, in sh different shows. So in my opinion, all the most uh, interesting artists are al already visible here in Czech Republic. So I had a little bit problem, uh, I had a small problem to, uh, to what I actually should talk about. And I thought I can maybe concentrate on one particular art scene in Poland and talk about what is happening there. And then I imme immediately decided to concentrate on Krakow, uh, where I studied. And I thought it's a very interesting scene. And it, there is a lot of... Uh, story about what is happening there uh, and maybe not everybody knows what how this scene exactly looks like. I'm staying in touch with this scene because uh, because of my studying and contacts that I'm having here but because I'm not living there I have also a nice perspective of what uh, what what is happening there and I can observe it from like a distance and see uh, some things which are maybe usually not seen. And also I think it's interesting to talk about Krakow because uh, for many years Krakow has been considered as a very uh, conservative when it goes to the art academy and when it goes to the art scene there, uh, which uh, probably this... Uh, uh, this opinion about Krakow com comes from few reasons. Uh, first, like there are a few institution which deal with contemporary art. So there is not much happening when it goes to contemporary art. Uh, there is also, when it goes to artists run space, there are also some spaces which uh, are open and then there are closed, but there is no public funding when it goes to, to supporting this alternative art scene. Uh, there is also no uh, public funded system when it goes to supporting artist studio. And uh, there is almost no commercial art scene there. So that's what makes maybe Krakow a little bit uh, problematic city. On the other hand, when you look at the Polish art scene and when you look at the artists who, let's say, are the most visible in Poland or even worldwide, then you see that artists like Wilhelm Sasnal, uh, Marcin Maciejowski, Rafał Buinowski, Julian jakub or Tomasz Baran, they're actually artists who studied in Krakow and who mostly still live in Krakow. So somehow, although the scene is considered to be very uh, uh, conservative, still somehow there is a lot of uh, promising and successful artists coming from there. It's also when it goes to the youngest generation of Polish artists. Uh, I also noticed that when it goes to some uh, competition or some awards or some shows where the, the freshly graduated students or freshly graduated artists are uh, exhibited, 
mostly the, the most interesting come somehow from Krakow. That's why I ask myself the question, why is that? And where this, uh, where this come from? And I came to, to the conclusion that maybe because the Krakow art scene or the Krakow Academy considered to be so conservative, uh, there is a huge possibility or there's possibility to rebel because the artists from the beginning or the students from the beginning know that they have to rebel against this conservative uh, attitude and what is settled and uh, maybe they try to find their, their own ways. And that's why they experiment a lot with, with arts. Uh, because the lack of strong art market, actually there is no competition. So, so artists can do whatever they want and they will not focus on like this commercial value of or, or doing works that have to be like commercially uh, valued mm, or they should not be fashionable or like somehow fit to the needs of the market. And, you know, it's easier to live in Krakow because uh, the prices are uh, lower when it goes to renting apartments or even renting studios, which is still very difficult. But uh, it means that also maybe there is less struggle to survive in Krakow, which means that artists can concentrate on making the uh, art and not uh, finding the way to, to survive in the city. I think also the crucial change when it goes to, uh, to art scene in Krakow and this phenomena that there is so much young artists, uh, promising young, young artists coming from, uh, from Krakow comes also from the actual change at the Art Academy. Uh, so although, as I told you before, the Art Academy is considered to be very conservative, uh, since uh, some years they have been like a change when it goes to the professors and uh, assistants who teach at the Art Academy. There is a group of young artists who uh, had a lot of or have a lot of experience. They uh, studied abroad, they exhibited abroad, uh, and they had contact with international institutions and uh, they also exchange a lot with international artists and they make projects together. And right now they teach at the Art Academy. And they also change a kind of um, this uh, teaching system, which is not based anymore on like master and student relation, but they try to build more like a democratic, more partnership relation between their students, which means that they also give a lot of freedom to the students and uh, they uh, support them in the way that the students want to be supported or where they needed to be supported. I would like to present maybe one of the artists who is also uh, teaching at the Art Academy in, in Krakow. And I think he has, in my opinion, he has the biggest influence on the youngest generation of artists from uh, Krakow. And it's uh, Michał Zawada, who was born in 1985 and he studied uh, art history at the Jagiellonian University and also painting at the Art Academy. And he uh, did his postdoc studies at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna. He's a painter himself and in his artistic practice he deals with uh, history and also with art history and reinterpreting the images which are iconic, which are uh, present in our popular consciousness. And for some years, he has been concentrating on commenting on political, uh, social and ecological issues. And he also asked himself uh, how our future would look like and how, you know, what kind of possible uh, scenarios for the future we have to, we have to face. Uh, Michał is also a co-founder of a project space called uh, Galeria Piana, which opened a few months ago. And it's uh, a space which uh, not only shows the youngest, the young artists, but also try to bring back uh, artists from different generations, artists who are uh, somehow outside of the mainstream of art in, in Poland, but not only. And I think this Galeria Piana, Piana is a, a space which is definitely worth uh, watching and uh, supporting. As I mentioned uh, it before, uh, Michał teaches at the Art Academy uh, in Krakow. 
and uh, I would like to maybe, cons and he's a painter himself, and I think also painting is a kind of trademark of Krakow Art Academy. So the most uh, interesting or the most well-known uh, artists are actually painters, and I think like painting plays uh, painting plays very important role uh, in Krakow. So I would like to present few artists who uh, are actually uh, fresh graduates. Uh, they graduated a few years ago or recently, and through those artists, I would like to also uh, present you what is going on uh, when it goes to, to paint, painting scene in, uh, in Krakow, but also in Poland, and what those young artists are interested in and what kind of subject they, uh, in what kind of subject they are dealing in their painting. So uh, at the beginning, I will start with the <laughs> oldest one. Uh, so I will talk about uh, uh, Konrad Zhukovsky, who graduated two years ago in 2019. He was born in 1995 and he deals with painting, with uh, object and installation. In his paintings, which are relatively large, uh, Konrad creates his own universe. He uh, creates his own, uh, own world. Uh, which is filled with uh, skeletons, dead bodies, uh, weird creatures, uh, which are mixed with real animals. It's a kind of very surrealistic uh, fantasy. And this world is also filled with violence. I mean, it's physical and sexual. Uh, and I think it's also very interesting in the sense that when you look at those paintings, at first you, you are a little bit disgusted. You think they're like, maybe ugly, they are very, as I told you, like violent. But on the other hand, there is something which makes you look at them. It's something very voyeuristic in a sense that you want to discover this world and you want to get into it. And still you want to, we, uh, you want to look at this, uh, this painting which makes them so, uh, so fascinating. Uh, the second artist uh, is uh, Jan Eustachewolski who was born in 1997, and he graduated last year, and he deals with painting, object, and installation. At the beginning, he worked a little bit with Konrad Zhukovsky. They had some shows together, so it seems that his uh, practice is a little similar to Konrad's uh, paintings, but when you have a better look or a better overview, you see that he goes like totally different direction, and this meeting point with Konrad was only a short uh, story, and right, right now uh, Jan uh, develops his own language. Uh, and I think what is very significant for on, uh, for Jan is that uh, his uh, works are smaller, he works with smaller scale. In contrast to uh, Konrad's work, um, his works are more elaborated in a sense that there is less details and each detail has its own uh, uh, place at the painting and it's like everything is also very elaborated and very uh, yeah, detailed. Um, so uh, Jan uh, also Mm, creates his own world, but this world is based on like a, f elements from from the history. Uh, he reaches to to uh, the romantic tradition or the figure from from the romanticism, and he also puts them together in a very baroque way. I think also baroque is a source of inspiration for this artist in the sense that. Uh, he also is fascinated by, by dance, uh, dance macabre and also this kind of overload of, uh, of emotion of uh, elements and also this contradiction between, uh, bet between different elements which they afterwards are put, are put on the painting. I will also show you uh, the image from his uh, diploma show, which was also a kind of uh, site-specific installation where he, not only his paintings were shown, but also uh, there was some wall drawings and it also created like a whole environment, like a very specific, very unique, when, when you can also find elements which come from uh, New Romantism or even from uh, death metal. 
subculture because he's also inspired by subcultures which also deal with uh, elements from Gothic, from Romantism, and, and he puts them, uh, he puts them together. I was talking about two uh, male artists, but of course there is a strong female artist uh, scene also happening in, in, in Krakow at the Art Academy. And there is each year there's a lot of uh, very good female artists graduating. And I would like to present, uh, in my opinion, three the youngest and the most interesting uh, uh, female artists uh, who just graduated this year from the Art Academy in Krakow. And the first uh, female artist uh, I would like to show you is Alicia Pakos. Mm, she was born 1996. She had her uh, diploma show this year. And uh, I decided to mention her because I think she um, she also managed to to create a very interesting attitude uh, towards painting. And first of all, uh, she reaches for like a very old-fashioned method of creating panoramic paintings, which is well known from the end of 19th century and the beginning of 20th century, which was like a kind of method of, of creating like this kind of three-dimensional uh, uh, installation, pa painting installation, where, when some of the elements were going from the painting. And usually this panoramic method was used to create uh, battle scenes, and it's well known for that. In Poland, we have Panorama Ratswawiska, which is created in this mode. And uh, Alicia decided to reach for it, but make it in her new way, like make it more up to date. So she created a series of works which are combination of painting and this uh, three-dimensional object. And I would like to show one of it, which is called Pokój, uh, the piece. And maybe I would like to um, read you the description of this work, because I think it will show you uh, what this work is uh, about and what, how she works with, with this method. Pokój piece work is a part of huge monument with no exact origin. It can be a monument for a peace between two nations, but there are no clues who exact built it or where it is located. It had to be big as a whole. The people who built it are not there anymore. The crust of the sculpture was inhabited by new people who are so small in compared to the monuments that probably are not able to see this gesture which become their home. So uh, the, uh, the work shows like two hands shaking, but you only see those two hands and not the rest of the, of the monument. So that's why this whole story was also created around it. And uh, I think also this kind of ironic attitude is very uh, important for Alicia. She works a lot of with this kind of sarcasm, ironic, uh, very also uh, surrealistic situation which she created, which are realistic made, like the, her paintings are for sure realistic, but then you see also this other layer, which is maybe this funny set or uh, very, like, as I mentioned, ironic at the end. Uh, the other artist uh, is Kinga Burek. Uh, she was born in 1995. Uh, she works with painting, uh, mostly with painting, but uh, she uses a very traditional technique. It means that she works with ek tempera, which is known from like a tradition of, of painting and especially in, in med medieval times. And she makes it with pigments. So it's also the whole process of making the paint herself. Uh, it's important for her, uh, for her work. And uh, it's a very time-consuming method. It means that also making the paint and then applying it, it's, it takes a while. Uh, and what I find very fascinating or very interesting uh, when it goes to work by Kinga Burek is uh, that um, for her, like she as a woman is like in the middle, in the center of 
of her artistic practice. So what she paints relates to uh, what is happening around her. She relates to social, political issues, to everyday problems uh, which she sees around her and she also pos positions her to it. Her paintings are very expressive. They are painted with like a very strong uh, uh, colors, but also very expressive gesture. Uh, she herself have, has like a very long curly red hair, which also is a kind of attribute on her paintings and also makes them more like a, a very, a very energetical. And I think uh, she presents also a very interesting uh, attitude in a sense that she shows how we can talk about our reality, our everyday problem, but also with a distance and from like a very, uh, let's say, uh, normal perspective, from a perspective of, of a normal, normal person. Kinga also develops uh, an Instagram project, which is called Halo Czy Jeste Zły, uh, which means Halo, are you angry? And it's also a series of small uh, drawings. It's, it's like a little bit like comic stripes. They are very absurd uh, because she tries to show like every, again, everyday moments uh, from her life, but show them in a very funny, uh, funny way. It's worth to see this Instagram uh, project uh, and how, how she creates those, uh, those comics. Last uh, artist who graduated this year is Veronika Habchenko. She was born in 1995. Uh, she uh, also deals with painting and painting installation. Uh, Veronika, before, uh, before starting, uh, uh, studying at the Art Academy in Kraków, uh, Veronika uh, also studied in Kiev at the Art Academy. Uh, and then she, she came to Poland to study here. Because of her background, she's Ukrainian, she also deals a lot uh, with this post-Soviet context, with the history of, of Soviet Russia, and her also uh, how this history can be perceived today. And I think it's also very uh, uh, something very interesting because this history of uh, Soviet Russia is not well known in Poland, although we all belong to this uh, Eastern uh, Soviet bloc. So somehow she also makes them um, like reminds us or, or shows us how this history looks like and what are the elements which were important for, for the culture of, of Soviet Russia. At the moment, Veronika develops her uh, new uh, project, which is based on uh, occultistic phenomena in Soviet Russia. And she uh, analyzes it and analyzes the history of the whole occultistic movement and uh, how it developed even before it was settled and how it ends. And it ends in 30s in, during Stalinistic times in Russia. Uh, and one of the uh, installation or one part of this project is uh, related to Helena um, Petrovna Blavatska who was a very important uh, person when it goes to theosophical circle in Russia, but in, also in Europe and outside in the US. Another project, uh, which was recently shown at the award called Artistyczna Podróż Hestii, so Artistic Journey of Hestia, was a project which dealt with uh, a Soviet child hero, Pavlik uh, Morozov, and uh, there was this whole myth created around him. He was like a pioneer and he reported his father, uh, who was a kulak, and his father was sentenced for a prison. And there was this whole story created about this Pavlik Morozov, and there were songs written about him and also poems. Uh, and he was a very important figure for like children in Soviet Union, but in reality, all the story way were made up. Like he was not a her heroic person uh, at all, and all the events that there were created and showing the braveness of this young pioneer actually never took places. Uh, so she also tries to deal with like the artist Veronica tries to rethink or redefine the whole uh, culture and propaganda of the Soviet Union. Right now, I would like to uh, maybe uh, go a few 
years backwards and present you a few artists who graduated some time ago or a few years ago. And uh, they also deal with painting, but in other ways. So for them, painting is a kind of uh, uh, material or a medium, medium for, uh, for an experiment. And they also enlarge the meaning of painting uh, as like two-dimensional uh, medium. And first artist is Emilia Kina. She was born in 1990. And uh, paintings by Emilia uh, balance uh, between abstract and figurative. So what she does uh, is that when you see her painting at the first, on the first view, you think that they are uh, two-dimensional, they are flat. But uh, when you look at them closer, when you have a better look at them, you see that actually she creates like a three-dimensional structures on a painting canvas. She works a lot of with, uh, with the motif of, of curtains, so something which is uh, veiled, covered, uh, hidden, not seen. And she takes this three-dimensional, uh, uh, she creates this three-dimensional structure, so then the painting has more uh, secret in it. it. It looks like you have this feeling that there is something uh, behind it, uh, something covered, which which cannot be seen by by the audience, by the viewers. The next artist who works like with similar methods is Philip uh, Rybkowski, who was born in 1991. He also asked a question, what is painting and how uh, we perceive painting? He creates works which are on a crossroad between uh, painting, mosaic, a wall painting, especially illusionistic uh, one, and object trouvé. He is interested in um, the meaning uh, and worth of a fragment, so something which is original, like an or, or, or original element which is perceived, and then uh, the copy of this original element, or how you put this one uh, original element, which element which is left in like a bigger a bigger hole or a bigger uh, picture. And he also asked the question, what those elements tell us about the past? So how from the small elements we can construct our, our past and the history around it. For him also this question about history and creating the history based on elements is also the question of, uh, of politics and creating history based on political elements and political uh, uh, events. From Philip, uh, I would like to right now jump to uh, artists who deal with, who were painters or like they studied painting, but they decided to concentrate on creating uh, videos and they work with, with, with videos. Uh, so first, uh, I would like to talk about uh, Potencia Group, uh, which I think is in Krakow the most well-known group, which consists of three uh, members. Uh, it's Karolina Jabłońska, who was born in 1991. Then there is Tomasz Tomas Kręcicki, who was born in 1990, and Cyril Polaczek, who was born in 1989. So actually, uh, the group has no formal character in a sense that they just met as friends, as artists, as painter, uh, painters. They uh, shared the studio together, they worked together, and then they decided to also uh, be active as, a, as an artistic group. For a while, they also had a project space where uh, they experiment with uh, different exhibition. They presented artists that they like. They also had a lot of fun and uh, it was a kind of uh, funny adventure for them. So I think this uh, this pleasure of making things is also very important for them. First, there are painters. So each of them has their her or his own uh, painting uh, uh, practice but also as this Potencia group, they make videos together. And I think what is interesting about those videos or what is the most significant is that, as I mentioned before, they do it uh, for fun. And 
this what what they are uh, reaching for is this B movie aesthetic. So for them, like they create videos which are horrors or scary movie, but consciously they use uh, they use this aesthetic of like badly made, very kitschy, uh, very absurd uh, videos. And I think this element of make, having a good time uh, is also important for them because they also invite their friends, uh, other artists to play in those films. They do it together. And what we see at the end is a funny uh, uh, movie which is supposed to be scary, which is supposed to, supposed to be like a horror movie, but we have a good time watching it. And we will watch uh, one video, which is called Zwere um, Kiny, Bad Angry Sharks. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Jak panu mija dzień? No te metę w agua. Proszę? Que no vaya al agua. Pero no te metę en el agua. Al agua no. Okej, okay, nie okej. Okay. Coś innego. Jakiś dobra, dobra. Do do miłego dnia. Miłego dnia, do widzenia. Tak? Miłego dnia. Ale. No te metas en el agua. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Jestem tutaj w sprawach zawodowych. Tak? Chciałbym zadać, zadać Państwu kilka tak, pytań. Proszę. Czy jesteście stąd? Nie, przyjechaliśmy tylko na jeden dzień odpocząć. Właściwie to przyjeżdżamy tu codziennie. To wydaje się być całkiem przyjazna okolica. Tak? A nie zauważyliście czegoś dziwnego? Nie. Wie pan, my tylko leżymy i czytamy. Może się pan poczęstuje. Nie, dziękuję. Ej, to co? Może pójdziemy na fonton? No, możemy iść.
Ładna dziś pogoda. No tak, racja, ale zaniepokoił mnie trochę ten gość. Jaki gość? Ten, co był i wypytywał nas. Jakieś dziwne rzeczy. A, ten. Nie przejmuj się. Co to? Wydawało ci się. Zwyczaj dziwne. Tak. Mam nadzieję, że Ciebie już nigdy nie spotkam. Co to jest? O kurwa, no kurwa, co to, to, to jest?
so another artist who uh, deals with uh, video and makes videos, but not only, is Martyna Kielesińska, who was born in 1991. Uh, she makes uh, installation, video installations, and uh, and also uh, some uh, some objects. But I would like to present her as a video artist uh, because I think also her attitude uh, is uh, interesting in a context of uh, Polish art, but also in uh, Polish Polish culture. Uh, Martyna grew up in time of transformation in Poland, and this experience of transformation uh, was very. Uh, important for her and she decided to then use it in her video work. So uh, her works are mostly found footages uh, based on materials uh, found uh, on internet, on YouTube, which, has, which is also, I think, the source of inspiration for the many young artists in Poland, where you can find actually everything. So Martina reaches for this uh, internet YouTube source and finds old commercial from 90s, from uh, the time where there was this obsession about consumeric lifestyle and consumption was like a very new experience for Polish society. So we had like this plastic things, a lot of new objects, which were colorful, which were like new. And uh, she's fascinated by it. She was as a kid, and right now she tries to put those memories together and make them in a new, in a new way. What we see is this kind of assemblance of fragments from commercials, from movies from the 90s, which is supposed to present like a very cheerful, very uh, nice life and, and life full of success and good experiences. But uh, what Martina does is that when we are lo looking at those films, we see that there is this hidden, uh, hidden uh, agenda or, or we see that it's not true. Like we see that, uh, that what is created is like a false reality. And she puts this kind of uh, element of uh, bitterness into this very uh, colorful and very sweet world.
to yourself, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's, there's no, no place like home. There's no place like home. Wake up, honey. There's no place like home. At the end, I would like to present you artist duo Ruja Duda and Michał Soja, who also work with, with, with video uh, works. And uh, mm, 
they use video in a very experimental way. Uh, Róża Duda was born in 1993 and Michał Soja was born in 1994. And while studying, they started to collaborate together. They are a couple in professional and in private life. And uh, what was also something new for them is that actually they did a diploma work together. So their diploma work was already like a collaboration between both of them as a duo. Already in their diploma work, they... Uh, experiment with film. They made like a very experimental film. I'm a minor son, uh, which was a journey between uh, from present to the future. The main character was a wanderer who wanders through like um, many corridors and uh, through these corridors he appeared in different post-apocalyptic places and post-apocalyptic dimensions. Ruja and Michał, they work a lot of with animation and part of their film is animated. So at the end, it's also difficult to tell uh, which part is real and which part is animated and what is what. So these two realities, the reality of virtual world and reality of real world, they just melt together. Uh, in a kind of another reality. At the moment, Ruja and Michał work on a new work. Uh, which is focused on uh, a history of uh, Faustus Wirkus. Uh, he was an American soldier with, with Polish origin, uh, who in the 20s was sent to Caribbean islands to fight against the uh, uh, independent movement there. And on one of the islands uh, called uh, uh, Genove, he was uh, announced a king of this island, because according to a legend, the previous king, uh, when he was dying, he announced that he will return again soon. So Faustus, from being a soldier, started to be a king of the island. But at one point, he decided to not stay on an, on an island, not support the local uh, people and their fight for independence, but return to, to American army and return to America. The artists uh, started to work on this film already a few years ago, and they presented like a first, uh, let's say, preview on a competition called Project Room in Ujazdowski Castle in, in, uh, in Warsaw. And right now they're working on a future movie, which will probably be ready next year. And uh, we will see a trailer of this uh, movie, which was shown uh, at Ujazdowski Castle. So I hope you will, you will enjoy it. Czy ja się bałem? And that's all. So I would like to thank you for uh, being here with me and listening to my presentation about uh, young artists from Krakow. And I hope you enjoyed it. And goodbye.